Namaste, Sakshi Manas Sakshi. I am Priya Goteti. Welcome to Immigration Talk Show with Dr. Shinvas Kaveti Garu from Kaveti Law Firms. Please note that Sakshi TV now has five immigration shows. Monday with Somi Reddy Law Firms, Tuesday with Kaveti Law Firms, Wednesday with Prashanti Reddy, Thursday with Chan Parvathaneni and Friday with Balu Indendar. Please tune in to, to ask your questions. If you are an immigration attorney and would like to join our special shows, please email us at usf.sakshi.com or call us at 866-725-7441. Live callers, you can call at the numbers shown on the below screen. And before we begin the show, please note that the, this show is only for information and general purpose only. And if you wanted any special legal advice, please uh, reach out to the Kaveti Law Firms for any special advice. Without any further delay, please welcome our Antajati Pramukha Nyayavadi Kaveti Garu. I am always honored, Andy, to have you on my show. Uh, welcome to our show, Andy. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Uh, so, Kaveti Garu, Eros, my topic, today's topic is like how to get green cards faster. So, uh, recently I'm hearing that if you know, uh, if you do like uh, invest like $1 million or 800k million dollars, you can get a uh, um, green card in EB1 category. Is it really true? Is it that simple? If you invest $1 million, can we get a uh, green card? Yeah, Priya, actually EB1 is for uh, people with extraordinary ability education. Huh? EB5 is for people who can invest $1 million. See, there's a misnomer, uh, Priya. Um, if you just invest $1 million, you're not going to get a green card. See, there are two types of um, this uh, EB5 category under those who invest $1 million. Uh, one is uh, you invest $1 million in a notified area where there are less and where, there's, where, where you need to generate employment. See, America, there is a, there are certain notified areas where they want to um, increase some unemployment. Uh, they want to make sure that people get jobs in certain areas in America, some small towns. And their notified areas are there in online. You can check it out. So if you invest a million dollars, you will have to hire at least 10 employees and then run the businesses successfully for a few years. Then you can get a green card by investing one million. Second thing, what you have is there are some regional centers. Let me explain to you what is the what is the meaning of regional centers. Regional centers are there are five centers by American USCIS. The American government USCIS said, okay, we will uh, make sure that there are certain centers with their where they recognize this federal government recognizes for the purposes of giving green cards. And Andy, what does it mean? For example, if you want to build a, a motel uh, or you want to build some um, big convention center or a, a shopping mall, okay, in certain areas. So the government wants only in certain areas, not everywhere, because you're generating maybe 100, 150 people employment. Let's say you're building a motel, like a, like a big uh, seven-star hotel, where you employ more than 150 employment. So they said, okay, the promoter will have 30% money in his park, from his pocket and maybe 30, 40% of the loans are given by the banks. And they said that, okay, 20, 30%, you can bring people from overseas. So if you're investing in that regional center, you still have to invest $1 million. So if you're investing, let's say you, you bring 30 people and each person invests $1 million, 30 uh, investors bring 30 million. Right, the banks gives the thirty millions, as uh, sixty millions are, have come, maybe forty millions. So the uh, investor, the promoter will bring it. Okay, that is the model. So you don't have to bring hundred million. You just bring hundred one million because you invest money in that regional center, and uh, the immigration has recognized that uh, immigrant regional center. So they will give you paperwork saying that okay, you can apply for a green card. Why? Because you're indirectly helping the country in boosting the economy and generating employment, Adi. And uh, when you can get this million dollars back, once the project is taken off and signed off, when the business is on its own now, that uh, the company is making profits and there are more than 150 employees, so the company is making uh, money. So then eventually they will return that money and then they'll give you a small percentage but in this process, you'll get your green card in three to four years or five years. Adi, that's a million dollars program, which is investing in regional centers. As I said to you, if you want to have your own money, 
you want to start up your own business in notified areas, which you can also do. Um, but the money is in your own account and you're running your own business, but you have to generate more than 10 employees at club. So there are two categories. So people are doing it. And in the past, if you see China uh, is the biggest uh, player in that, and they were bringing a lot of money from China. And uh, there are other European countries also invested money like that. India is very, very small, only 2%. Hinduku, the reason is because Indians, they do have money. But the thing is, they can't show the tax returns. They have to show at least two to three years of tax returns saying that this is a clean money. It has to be clean money. They have to show the bank accounts. They have to show the tax returns. It cannot be a black money. And uh, in India, everybody has money, but they don't show tax returns. because They don't have, they cannot support that money which they have in their banks. So most of the times what is happening, and when you say Indians, when they're coming, they are mostly coming from, um, you know, either from Hong Kong or Dubai or from Africa. And most of the people who are investing from India are either from Gujarat or from Sindhi community. And these two people are all having companies and businesses outside India. So they are investing and they are coming. So only 2% from Gujarat. But I have not seen anybody coming from South India. Because, um, you know, we all, uh, because the problem is most of them, they are all into IT or management or medical doctors. They're mostly South Indians are all professional. They're not into big businesses. And if you see the history of India, from the time of Gandhiji also, this Gujaratis, they had businesses in Africa, Hong Kong, Philippines, and a lot of uh, outside countries. South American countries also, they had businesses. And full of Africa also, they had businesses. So they, and even Middle East now, they, they pump that money because it's a clean money, tax paid money. So that's what the companies are, and the government is looking. So it's a tax paid money. So uh, they invest and they come. So this is this is what the process is. Yeah, like you said, there are two ways. One is investing in regional centers. Other thing is like investing in your own company, but it should be a claimed money. So um, uh, if like two or three people, like South Indians, we don't have like a lot of money. Most of them would be IT employees. If two people like blood related, if they combine together and put like $1 million, like do they both get the green cards? No, it has to be one. See, one. you can bring your wife and children. You cannot just pull from two, three people and say that, you know, um, you know, we are starting this. Can you give green card for all the promoters? See, what you could do, you could take a loan in this country and you can invest that in, uh, uh, in, uh, in, uh, in um, you know, regional centers. Million dollars is okay. You can do that. And, um, you know, you can take a loan. You can do anything like that. People do also take loan. That's not a problem. So that is possible. You can take loan. You can uh, raise the money from different sources. You know, you can um, raise money from your own property, things like that. So by taking loan, we can, uh, taking a loan to invest in regional centers and then apply for the green card. Though the yes. Still, oh, okay. Correct. Because... Even they, they want to see the loan documents. Where did you get the money? Uh, what are the loan documents? Who has uh, lended you that money? And what is the percentage? And, um, you know, this guy who has lended you the money, is it through the banking channels or is it, you know, financial institutions or any, you know, you know private lenders? They will see all of that. You have to justify. See, at the end of the day, it's justification. Why? Because... In America, after September incident, a lot of financial crimes and a lot of money being laundered into America. And all these uh, you know, Muslim countries, they are funded in terrorism. So they don't want money coming from undisclosed uh, uh, sources. They don't want money coming from some drug cartels. They want clean money. So they want uh, to know where you got this money and how this uh, lender has given the money. Do they have that much of potential and the feasibility? They will look at all that, all those things, because you're bringing a lot of money into the country. Okay, yeah. and uh, I I'm also hearing one more kind of visa like NIW visa where with specialized skill set or something. So what is about NIW okay. visa? A lot of times nowadays, what's happening? It's called national interest waiver. See, if you've seen the past in America, 
if you see the history of technology, how it is happening in this country, if you see the Facebook, if you see Uber, or if you see, um, you know, WhatsApp and, you know, YouTube, all these um, companies which are coming up in America, um, even Amazon, all these people, these companies, they come up, they come up with an idea. And uh, that idea generates millions of dollars. So these days, all these technology guys, they're coming with a lot of artificial intelligence, a lot of apps, which which can generate, uh, uh, which can um, bring in a lot of employment and generate a lot of money also. So if you're doing something which uh, generates uh, uh, employment and also which boosts the economy of America, which is of national importance, Let's say if you take up artificial intelligence now, there are a lot of apps are coming. If you see uh, robotic um, you know, science or robotic engineering, whatever, uh, if you say solar and a lot of, you know, th these young uh, young uh, IT uh, Turks, you know, they're, they're coming up with a lot of, um, you know, innovations. If you do some innovations in the country and you have a patent and you have a, a copyright and trademarked and all of that, and this, um, um, you know, product or your idea, venture capitalists would invest money. You, you, you have done something with national interest waiver. So if you do something of national importance, you can also apply for green card. So while doing being on an H1 also, people can do PhDs. People can also come up with inventions. It's an idea, basically an idea. If you uh, if you're doing that idea, and if that is helpful helping the American government. It is of natural uh, national interest. Uh, what does it mean? If it is interesting to the country, then the government says, okay, we give you a waiver. You don't have to go through any employer. You can file your own green card by yourselves. And okay. two, uh, some of the inventions, uh, let's say you have done your postdoctorate or doctorate. Sometimes you have done some inventions in cancer or some drugs which you invent. Uh, recently, somebody is... Uh, you know, discovered that without pricking, you can have a, uh, you know, a blood sugar um, um, glucometer. You don't have to prick. So some inventions like that, people are doing it. And they're Indians, actually. The IIT guys have come up. So uh, with the with the association, association with MITs in America. So people come up with something like that, which is of national uh, interest. So the government will say, okay, we give you green card. We want such intelligent engineers or uh, discovery people who are scientists, they want in this country, they will give you a green card. So you don't have but, to wait. Uh, sorry to interrupt. This is different from the PhD holders who apply under EB1 category. This is EB1 different. Cat yes, that is, they are called extraordinary ability. Uh, people who have uh, come up with inventions and discoveries, and let's say you've come up with some international publications and you, you became an author, let's say, You've done something in research in artificial intelligence, and then people have quoted you. They have taken your research, and all over the world, they're taking your theory or your algorithms or your software, and people are banking on your uh, uh, discovery. So th that is under the extraordinary ability uh, that comes in EB1 category. Then you don't need any sponsor. Or you can petition your own self. You know, in the past few years, we have done some green cards under the extraordinary ability of a firm. And uh, they have done some discovery in uh, nanotechnology uh, in, uh, in, uh, in cancer research. So this lady is first from India and she came for a postdoc and she did some invention in nanotechnology, got a green card because those professors and university recommended, they gave recommendation letters. She had some international national uh, um, you know, publications. They applied and they got it. So that's under the EB1 category. Yeah, it's an excellent question you asked me. That's a different. National interest waiver is different from EB1 category. Mm -hmm. These are the fast run uh, getting green cards. These are the ways. And a lot of people are also asking while doing an H1, can they do a PhD? Can they do a master's degree? Can they do certain inventions? Can they do copyrights, patents? Yes, they can do it. People are doing it with H1s also. Okay. So, Kaviti Garu, like I recently heard in a podcast, like if you have some special ability, like, you know, in sports person or if you're a dancer or even media person like like me, like doing some shows or something, it's very easy to, um, you know, file under uh, NIW or some category and get a green card, you know, like you meet some 
out of six or seven rules, if you meet three rules, you can immediately get a green card. Is that that simple? Like anyone can find it? Very true. Um, last time we did a green card for our firm has done a green card. Uh, she was a Nandi uh, Award winner from Tamil Nadu, but she's a director of movies. And uh, we got her green card, our firm got her green card in 15 days. Um, it, she was amazed, and uh, but we did a great job in that. So we also did a green card for some sportsmen, like chess champions or, you know, people with different uh, uh, sports background, they can also get. And people with, you know, a lot of extraordinary ability in music, dance, media, they do get it because people who have got international acclaim, they file it, they get it. Even movie actors and actresses, somebody, you know, artists, they, musicians, they get it. You know, if you see um, Indian uh, Zakir Hussain got his green card um, uh, through extraordinary ability as a musician, because I met him a couple of times. We did some work for him. Uh, mm -hmm. He was our client and uh, we did some musical contract for him. So uh, uh, with him, I also met uh, uh, Ustad Sultan Khan and a couple of uh, these people from Bombay, and we did some work for them. So yes, uh, people do get uh, uh, green cards through uh, music. Media people also do get uh, extraordinary ability. Media people also get uh, green cards. And there's actually, there's another separate visa for media guys uh, called, uh, you know, uh, there's, there's an I visa for the international journalists and media guys. They can come and live as much as they want in this country. Uh, we have done, our firm has helped a lot of uh, media guys from Hyderabad. Those who have come and working in America, it's called I-Visa, which you don't need any approval from immigration. Uh, you take a job off a letter, go to the embassy, you get an I-Visa. You can come with your wife and children in America. They come and live as international journalists. If you see BBC journalists and all those foreign European uh, TV journalists, they come and stay here. And if they start a broadcasting business also, they can get it. Yes. Oh, wow. So uh, like, uh, it's not like three years, six years, like H1, the journalist visa will be like, oh, that's nice. Yes. And, uh, and if they can come and they can file the green card, uh, they would right. be getting because they want, Yeah, they want to see because if you're doing some extraordinary work in, in terms of maybe United Nations or to Africa or some places, I mean, you know, if you have uh, got the extraordinary uh, things and you got international acclaim, they don't want to lose you. I mean, let me be honest with you. America is looking for smart people all over the world. If you're a chess champion or a golf player or a football player or a cricket player, whoever it is, if you're a top guy in the world, they want those genius guys in this country. And okay. they will give you a green card. Period. They should be extraordinary abilities in whatever field that they choose. Yeah. Got it. Yes. Uh, two years ago, we did one green card for a fishery scientist in India. And he was a fishery scientist. He was doing some research on fishes in, uh, you know, fresh water. And yeah. uh, we applied for his green card. We got his green card in four months time. And he was a fishery scientist from Bangalore. And uh, his, his daughter was in America and uh, she was in an H-1B. And they contacted our firm. We did a green card for him. And uh, because... Freshwater, you know, research on fishes, uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's of national, national importance to this country. People, people do uh, research on fishes in sea waters, not in the fresh waters. So we, we, we could convince the immigration and he got uh, his green card. So there are different types. Many times people think, oh, I might not get it. But uh, when you see some competent immigration lawyers, they were, there are some specialized people. They assess your category and they say, yeah, it's a good case. So you should you should retain some good lawyers in the country, those who specialize in this area, and they can get it. I mean, you know, people uh, people get it in different types of uh, you know visas. So they get green cards. Uh, so we talked about like faster visas, like NIW visas, or uh, you know, um, funding like putting money, investing money in regional centers and all. So what is the time frame when we're seeing faster green cards? Is it by case case by case, or do we have a I would say two to three years. I mean, if I give you an example on L1 visa, people start up these companies in America. When you see Tata Consulting or Mahindra, all these Indian companies, they come. It could be a medium-sized companies also. They set up a company, they come on an L1. Uh, within two years, they can apply for a green card. L1, there's no waiting period. See, and even people coming on L1, uh, uh, L1A and L1B, these are IT guys coming from... 
charter consultancy or Mahindra and other IT consulting companies. They come, they come on L1B, they can also get it into three years' time. So there's no waiting period for them because they come under the top class EB1, international, um, you know, uh, these are all inter international, you know, top management guys. It could be chartered accountants, CIOs, CFOs, or even, uh, C, you know, even managing directors or, you know, uh, all those people, they come in top management guys and they pay taxes and they're bringing uh, revenue to the company back home and they're also bringing revenue in this country. So they get green cards in two, three years. We have done it. Uh, but the company has to file them or company has to sponsor them, the visa. Okay. Right. L1A, yeah, company has to do it. But if, okay. if, for example, if you're the managing director, you're making your own decision. Yes. <clears throat> you're a CIO or a CFO or, you know, things like that. CTO, things like that. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so um, we only have these kinds of visas or do we have any other way to get like H-1Bs or L-1A or L-1B candidates? Do we have, they have any other way to get faster green cards? Well, I would say one is through um, investment as we rightly touched and two is through the extraordinary ability. Three is for the national interest waiver. Four is by investing money. A lot of time these time these days, uh, people have been calling, students have been calling us. They're on a student visa. They have a question. Oh, my father wants to invest money in America. And uh, can my father can set up a company here? And can we bring in money legally? And uh, we can apply for green card. The answer is yes, they can also do that. And uh, by being a student, you can also incorporate a company. You can do business, but you cannot work full time. You have to be a promoter. See, there's a narrow, uh, you know, thin line between working full time and running a business as a promoter. I mean, you know, people always invest money in corporations, passive investments, active investments. People also buy shares. I mean, there is a, a thin line. They have to hire some competent chartered accountants or CPAs in America or some competent immigration lawyers and corporate lawyers not breaching the laws. They can also apply and get it. Uh, these days, a lot of students also call us and there's, they're doing some, you know, there are many students, those who do a lot of, you know, inventions, come up with some great ideas, you know, ideas like, you know, I just met somebody, they're, uh, you know, uh, taking the technology from U.S., sustainable, uh, you know, solar technology or battery technology to India, and they're doing technology transfer to India. I mean, you know, things like that, some novel things they're doing. Uh, the United Nations is also is coming up with a lot of things. Let's say artificial intelligence, cryptocurrency. There are a lot of new areas of businesses are coming. And these young Turks, young boys, they're going to school in this country and they want to do it. So they're getting into it lawfully and they're doing it and they're applying for it. I mean, definitely the government look into all of that and they do give green cards. So every case to case is different. They have to get in touch with competent lawyers. In every jurisdiction, there are lawyers, but they have to comply the law. You know, talk to the CPAs, talk to the corporate lawyers, talk to the immigration lawyers, those who do a corporate immigration. So not somebody who does H1s and, you know, visitor visa extensions or immigration litigation lawyers. There are some corporate lawyers, big time law firms, they do it. So they have to get the legal advices from them. Uh, so even the H1B holders, uh, when they are doing the H-1B, like the company, when they're working in an IT company, they can start a company. They, they can start a company and based upon their turnovers, they can file for EB-1 category, like in the investment category or in any other category. Okay. Absolutely. If they can justify, yes. So it doesn't matter, like it doesn't come like a conflict of interest, like they are on a H-1B and they're having a company. That's the common uh, fear that most of the H-1B holders have, like to start a company like, uh, you know, I'm on the visa. What happens to my visa? Will I get deported or something? So H-1B, guys, if you see the H-1B application form, I mean, now there is a column saying that the H-1B guy who's getting sponsored from that company, there is a column now by the immigration. They're asking, does the H-1B employee who's getting sponsored from this company, does he have any equity in the company? So that means... If the immigration law says it's illegal, then why would have that uh, uh, column in the immigration application form? That means there is a misnomer in the country that H-1B guys cannot open up a company. Even as students can also open up a company. There's nothing wrong in it. 
but you cannot work for that company full time. You cannot be in the board of directors. Or you cannot be controlling the company. That's a, the, the definition, what they've used in immigration law, that you cannot be controlling the company. You cannot sponsor your own self by controlling the company. So there are definitions by the Supreme Court of America and by the different legislation, what is the definition of controlling? So we will not be able to discuss that in a short, uh, this 15, 20 minutes of our television series, but they should get in touch with the lawyers and say, hey, I'm opening up a company, I'm investing, I'm a promoter. You know, you're not controlling, but you have other uh, shareholders or other uh, officers who control the company and they cannot be doing full time. They have to be employed by somebody else, but they can invest some time passively and run the business. Yeah. You know, the people are doing uh, Airbnb business, people are buying cars, they're renting out the cars, people are buying uh, agricultural land in America now, people are buying uh, properties and they're developing houses, housings, you know, a lot of people in Texas, they're doing now, all IT guys. So you can do passively. People are even buying uh, malls, you know, uh, you know, big malls they buy. Uh, during the time of COVID, a lot of IT company owners, they started buying malls. They started... Uh, uh, doing 500 acres, 300 acre uh, property development. So that's all lawful. There's nothing unlawful. But you, they should get in touch with some competent lawyers not breaching the law. And if they make money, they have to pay the taxes, comply the tax laws, not launder the money, you know, take the money here, send it to, you know, take the money and send it to India, launder the money, evade taxation. Don't do that. That's what it is. So they have to comply the laws, financial laws, uh, patriotic laws, immigration laws, and com corporate laws. Yeah, thank you so much, Kaveti Garu. Yeah. And uh, viewers, this is how you can get faster visas uh, for the, I mean, faster green card uh, is by either investing or NIW visas. Uh, you know, if you have 1 million uh, funds, you can invest in regional centers and even H1B holders. That's a new, like for me, it's like a new thing. Like even H1B holders can, you know, start a company and uh, they can invest it. So um, like I said in the beginning of the show, this is just for information purpose only. For additional information, please reach out to Kaveti Law Firms for any kind of immigration issues. Reach out to Kaveti Law Firms. And this is uh, Priya Goteti signing off. Thank you. Thank you.